past the day. Geeta's marriage work had been speeding up as the day was nearing. This time Veera decided one thing very sturdily. He wanted all his village people come to the marriage unlike the betrothal. He wished to show his mass to Jai Kumar. So he decided as many invitations as possible. Went to his village Mudavandiral and invited every single family in that village. He arranged so many lorries to fetch all those village people to Madurai. Geeta was all sitting calm in her house determining to go along with her destiny and not to take any wrong decisions after committing that blunder she had handed over everything to her father though she could never imagine of living with Jay Kumar a married life she was slowly adapting it day by day she had been starting to imagine of a married life with Jay Kumar she didn't want to fight again for Velu for the sake of betterment of family's happiness nor wanted to kill herself frightening to marry Jay Kumar nor wanted to keep on crying for such consequence she just adapted herself to that fate in next two days Geeta's marriage with Jay Kumar Veena was all busy to buy things and arrange for the marriage his secretaries were unofficially accompanying him throughout this job finishing all his official words in devakotai veera along with his two secretaries started for madurai he had already submitted his leave application to the district collector for one week fixing few of his luggage in the car Veera got in his car and those two secretaries were enthusiastically getting in the car talking some funny bits among themselves to make Veera happy. The driver started the car and put the first gear. The car had not even moved 10 feet from the gate when the driver put a sudden brake and Veera including those two secretaries bumped themselves in that threshold. What? Veera raised his voice to his driver. Driver switched on the front light and showed the road. Sir, see that. Veera and the two secretaries were peeping up their heads and saw the road and found something crawling and crossing the road. It was a tortoise. Catch her, catch her. Geeta's friends and few neighbor little children were chasing Geeta in our living room. I was asleep in my bedroom locking myself in. I covered my entire body with a thick bed sheet and it was a midday sleep after the previous full night's project work. A one kid screeched and all of a sudden my sleep was disturbed by the noise from the living room but i tried a lot to continue my sleep as i desperately wanted a deep sleep and was very tired those girls and children were playing and teasing geeta for the upcoming marriage after so many days geeta was playing with those children she was enjoying their visit to our house please stop this i will kill you all Geeta shouted but didn't stop running. They were all running around the sofas and chairs. Geeta and her girlfriends were least making the noise but the little children were squealing and thudding the furniture around. At one point I felt I was totally disturbed from the sleep. I jumped up from the bed, opened the door and puckered my brow on everybody there. Shh, Geeta stopped everyone with her hush. but none other than her understood my anger they kept on continuing their fun geeta was seeing my eyes in fright hey we caught her we caught her hey everyone including those big girls were exclaiming in high pitch i was pissed off to the core walked straight to the wardrobe took a mirror came to the center of the hall and broke it on the floor with a bang and there had that hulle balu stopped Everyone was stunned and just frozen wherever they were. I walked back to my bedroom, slammed my door and put myself stuck within the bed sheet. But how could anyone sleep after making such drama? In the next few minutes I heard the murmuring voices saying bye and those kids were leaving my house. In another next few minutes I heard a sob from my living room and a voice beside that cry scolding me. After a few minutes I stood up and opened the door. This is my betrothal mirror. He has broken it. What will I do now, Ma? Geeta was holding the frame of that mirror, hanging her head down and weeping. I then saw the condition of our living room, where the glass pieces were shattered all around. Anger makes a man a fool. Every happening around our society would provoke a man, but when will a man get the maturity to control his anger before he suffers the consequences of the anger? 
Though I had bought a new mirror of the same design from a shopping mall that evening itself, neither was Geeta consoled by it, nor did I learn maturity through that. This incident is purely a man-made one based on my anger and it has nothing to do with any destiny but I just wonder if this was a symptom of any future or if this was anything to do with a prophecy or if it was merely a coincidental event. So far, researchers have not proven scientifically these things in our history. These bad symptoms had been remaining as theories but were not proven in science. Some call it superstitious when some believe in such indications, but one thing is very clear. There are certain things which man cannot touch, man cannot prove and man cannot reach. 29th August 2001 Marriage Day Finally, Gita's marriage day arrived. As I had already decided, I stayed in Ramanathapuram and didn't go to marriage. Veera's only ambition in that marriage was to show his mass off to Jay Kumar, letting him know that Veera's power was not less than Jay Kumar's. He hired 10 lorries and sent to his village to fetch all the people to the marriage. Marriage hall was full of Veera's people. Jay Kumar must have been laughing with them. Veera never talked with Jay Kumar throughout that marriage day. He was just doing the rituals and the duty of a bride's father. On the other hand, he never allowed anyone from our family to talk with the groom's family as well. I didn't understand what nonsense was that. But Lakshmi, Mayil and Saranya were just obeying Veera's order. No other go for them actually. What happened next was an unforgettable one in Gita's marriage. It might have been a coincidental or fatal or whatever, but it was a really unanswerable one up to the extent of my knowledge. The auspicious time had started. The groom was already sitting on the stage with a garland in his neck. The pujari called for the bride. Gita was brought to the stage by few ladies. In the next few minutes, the pujari declared Jaikama to tie the knot in Gita's neck. The moment Jay Kumar took that Thirumangaliyam, the entire marriage hall got power cut. All the lights, fans, sound system, everything went off. Only the light from the video camera, which was operated by the battery, was glowing the stage. The pujari kept pronouncing the mantra. Jay Kumar tied the knot around Gita's neck. The moment he finished tying the knot, the power had come on. This power cut prevailed only for just 30 seconds but in that whole day there was no power cut other than this moment. This same 30 seconds power cut might have happened in any other moment of the 24 hours. This made Lakshmi, Mile and Saranya exclaim and stun and worry. Moreover, that power cut happened only in that marriage hall and not in any part of that vicinity. Again, I want to insist here that it could be purely coincidental or might be immortal. Are these signs and symptoms and indications by God a researchable question? Past 31 After one week, telephone rang and Lakshmi picked it up. Hello, she said. Amma, Gita speaking. How are you, Ma? said Gita from the opposite side. Veera was very obdurate in certain things. After getting her daughter married to someone, he strictly told everyone in our family not to have any contact with either Geeta or Jay Kumar or anybody in their family. He never wanted to continue their relationship further. The main reason was that he kept on growing his imagination that Jay Kumar and Lakshmi had some illegal connection. So. In the action of disconnecting such a relationship, he didn't mind paying off Gitanjali to Jay Kumar. All Veera wanted was just to disconnect Lishmi from Jay Kumar and to completely forget Gita. Author's note. In Tamil Nadu, especially in Hindu Tamil legacy, there are so many rituals and traditional responsibilities of a bride's father to do after the marriage. One of the rituals called Seer is to be done by the bride's family. After the marriage, the bride and the groom usually require all the basic necessities in their new house right from the stove to the bed. In Hindu legacy, the bride's father must buy all these basic things and send to his daughter's new house. These things are called seer. 
This ritual is considered a prideful moment of bride's father. If an affluent father sends lots of things in trucks, a poor father may send few things in a small tricycle. It depends on the financial status of a bride's family. Jay Kumar's family must be expecting lorries and lorries of things from Veera, but the story was very different. Veera had stopped totally everything, including his responsibility of being a father. It seemed like Veera wanted Jay Kumar to know this. Hey, Mofo, you fought for this only, right? Now that you got it, don't disturb me. Get lost. My sweet darling, I'm fine, dear. How are you there? Said Lakshmi. Geeta gave a laughter and answered and said. Things are totally new for me, Ma. God has taught some big lesson from my mistakes. She passed a while. Why are you speaking like this, dear? Are you not happy there? I am just saying my fate, Ma. I was born a silver spoon baby. Now see, my life is around cowdings. I only created it, but I will not create any more problem for my dad and my family again. So I will adjust, accept, and live this life as it goes. Geeta was pouring out her heart non-stop. Geeta, where are you now? I came out to shop with my sister-in-law, and it's a public telephone booth. Geeta gasped. Are they sending you to the shops? Exclaimed Lakshmi. No, Ma. I wanted to talk to you. Immediately said Geeta. How's your husband, dear? Is he taking care of you well? All is well? Said Lakshmi, in curious. Geeta kept quiet. I understand your silence. Something must be there behind it. Lakshmi affirmed. He drinks, Ma. Every single day he drinks and comes. This is just seven days after my marriage. How can a man drink soon after the marriage? He said, "Drunkard, ma. Every single night is horrible for me." Geeta whispered it. Lakshmi couldn't control her tears, but she didn't want to weep. Geeta, listen, my darling. Just now you told you would adjust this life. You are coming to know he drinks. I am praying to God for you, dear. I am very sure that God will not let us down. Don't worry, nothing bad will happen. Coming Friday, I'll come there preparing biryani and vegetable kurma, your favorites. Despite your dad blocks me to visit your house, how can I sit here leaving my daughter there alone? Okay, ma, I'm waiting for you. My sister-in-law is signaling it's getting late. I'm going. Bye, ma. Geeta was ending up the conversation. Okay, my eye. Take care. See you on Friday. Lakshmi sighed and kept back the telephone receiver. After one month, telephone rang and Lakshmi picked it up. Hello, she said. All she heard was a sob, and she found Geeta was crying in the opposite side. Geeta, Amma, inna di why are you crying? Last night he came drunk and beat me a lot, Ma. It was not the beat I had from Dad. More than that, he just thrashed me a lot, Ma. Geeta burst into cry. What? Lakshmi was unbelievably shocked. Few seconds, both of them were calm. But why? Why did he beat you? Said Lakshmi. Here, all are talking about the gold and seer from our dad. My mother-in-law is keeping on screwing my husband every day. Why did you marry her? For this, you could have married an orphan instead. You kept on saying deputy collector's daughter and all, just for this white skin you married her. She keeps on scolding me every day. This morning, my husband and my mother-in-law had a fight regarding this. She gave left and right to my husband an argument. He couldn't speak anything. That's why he came drunk and showed all his anger on me. Geeta finished explaining and resumed crying. Lakshmi was all stunned and restless. In the next few months, one early morning, our grandma was dead. Veera started informing to all her relatives through telephone. He first dialed to Rajati. Raji, he started mourning. Enna Veeru, our amma has passed away. He cried his level best. Just the day before my grandma died, I remember Veera mumbling, "When the soul die, we pass away. How long will she stink on the bed like this?" Raji, listen. I am planning of inviting that bastard to the funeral. I want you to start a problem. I want to beat Lakshmi in front of all the village people, especially in front of that bastard. We must show off our strength. What do you say? Veera muttered, "Definitely, Veera. I'll take care of that." First, he informed to all our people. Raja, they cut off the phone call. Veera called all the village people and also sent off a message to Jay Kumar's family regarding this demise. That afternoon, our house was crowded with a lot of people. 
grandma's body was placed in the living room all the village people were around our house jaykumar and geeta entered our house at 4:30 that evening geeta entered into the kitchen to see lakshmi jaykumar worshiped the deceased grandma wore a garland on the body and sat on a chair calmly lakshmi was supplying coffee to everyone around our house veera signaled raja they restarted our family is declining like this one by one it's all because of sin someone has committed we all are suffering due to that raja the veil the morning lakshmi came near raja the projecting the coffee and said aunty take the coffee don't cry nothing's in our hand saying which she walked past raja the see heard it veera did you hear that i grew up this girl and she's now raising her tone on me screamed rajati with her chubby appearance sitting like a pumpkin on the floor in next 10 minutes the argument had grown so violent which started between lakshmi and rajati had spread wildly that a lot of village people also involved to create a riot finally rajati scolded to veera hey veeru why are you feeding these people your food pointing her four finger towards my face mail saranya geeta and lakshmi throw them away from my house I really felt that yelling so awkward. So far I thought it was a dispute going on around elderly people, but this proclamation from Rajati was very weird to my knowledge. So for the first time in that riot I had to raise my voice. Hey pig, who are you? Get out of my house, you bloody chubby pig. If peeled off your skin the whole city can eat your meat. Having that cholesterol you better have your husband in your control. We know how to run our family. Get out of our house. Rajati, her husband, her son, all were running to beat me while Lakshmi immediately acted and stood in between them and me and folded her hands. Why are you trying to beat my son? What wrong did he say? Why this racket in this morning house? Before Lakshmi completed saying this, out of somewhere, Veera flew towards her and gave a slap on her cheek. Author's note. What was I doing there being the first son of my mother? I was just clearly seeing Lakshmi's face when she was receiving such a banging slap from Veera. She was actually collapsed in that unexpected slap and I could see her facial muscles shaking and her eyeballs were found unstable. What was I doing there? I am ashamed of myself staying idle seeing that. I now, after all these years, have started thinking why must a husband have all the authority to beat his wife when the wife always stays a receptacle? India is preaching a wrong lesson to the future generation that feminism is always a submissive gender to the masculinity. What if Lakshmi reciprocated the same bang of slap back to Veera the same moment after receiving the slap from him and L? Is it not painful for you, my dear husband?